YouTube. This is Cade coming back to you. Today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to try doing an ASMR video about a shitty keyboard and an equally shitty mouse. I've never done ASMR, but I have discovered that an ad repellent is to swear because fucking YouTube is full, so full of ads. You've got to do stuff like that. And it's sad, isn't it? Anyway, this is going to be a nice little ASMR video about this keyboard and this mouse. So why don't we start off by trying to figure out what type of mouse this is without shaking the camera too much. What do we have here? Oh, that's an M510 unifying mouse. It's pretty good. No, not really. It just doesn't feel good in the hands. That's why I don't use it much. It also takes two AA batteries, so kind of heavy. And here is the other shitty peripheral. What is this thing? I don't even know. Let's see if I can figure it out. discovered what it is. It's a K350. What meaning does that number have? Again, I don't know. But you can count on it being pretty shitty. Now, why do I say that? Well, let's take a look at this old keyboard. First of all, Let's go over here and look at these funky little keys here. Zoom. When was the last time you used that on your keyboard? Who knows what this is? But it doesn't do anything anymore. I think this was called a charm. Back in, I don't know, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista. And of course, pictures you've got now this section here I would call this fairly usable because you know it has a standard down and up volume along with a mute you've got advance the track and take the track back you gotta stop a play and pause that works that's not so bad. Now you've got a whole giant dedicated key to opening up your media player. Why? Who the fuck knows? And then we have Media Center. When was the last time you heard of Windows Media Center? Good question, right? And here we have it. A button to turn off your computer right here or to start your calculator. Now why do we need to put dedicated keys to do either of those things on a keyboard? Just so you might accidentally turn off your computer by accident and hit that thing. Now to their credit, they've kind of made it recessed a bit. But come on. All right, that's just a start. Now let's dig into it a little deeper, shall we? Sorry for the shaky cam. That isn't generally what's in an ASMR type video. So I'm kind of violating the ASMR rules. So sorry about that. 
All right. So now we have dedicated keys for starting Word, Excel, some kind of calendar, some programmable keys, A, B, and C, a key to, to uh, oh, hello, look, a key to open up Internet Explorer, Windows Messenger, and presumably Outlook. Then we have a key, a bunch of keys dedicated to doing a search on the internet, telling you what your battery is like, and ejecting your optical drive. Over here, we have the context menu, and uh, frankly, I don't know. dedicated special key that you would use using this function here. This function key right here. Press that, one of these keys, and you're going to have all kinds of fun opening up things without having to just use the standard Windows key right here. Interestingly, they call this a wave keyboard. Why do they call it a wave keyboard? Well, look at how it swoops up and down like a wave. Yeah, it swoops up and down like a wave. Like a wave. Now, why did they call it a wave? And where else on this computer, or sorry, on this keyboard, does wave even appear? They call it a K350. Not a K350 wave keyboard. It's like they just decided, hey, we'll just put this funky looking wave symbol at the bottom here. And then of course, is right since 
Since they pretty much sell every keyboard for $10. really cool about it is how it binds. Yeah, you just don't, you hit that thing on the wrong angle and it really gets hard to push down. I think I got it there, there you can hear it. Yeah, that's awesome. You want that when you're typing down on a key. It's have this weird binding issue. Taking a little bit of Vaseline and putting it into around the housing. Like pop out the key and take it and put it into the housing a little bit, just a tiny bit of Vaseline. And I found that that can sometimes lubricate the, the housing and the key enough to make it less binding. Is my video boring enough to actually put you to sleep? To tell you the little story that it's boring and therefore good for ASMR is that somebody said, hey, you have a good voice for ASMR. It's very relaxing. And I thought, oh, that's nice. Do you mean I'm boring? Anyway, then somebody said, if you want to get lots and lots of views, what you really need to do is you need to make an ASMR video. You get thousands and thousands of views. So I thought, hey, let's put that to the test. Normally, because of YouTube's ad policies, I usually like to put a little bit of I like to put a little bit of you know, copyright music into a video like this. And that's not gonna be very ASMR like, is it? Not at all. So I just put enough swearing in it that the ad people go, holy shit, I don't want to put my ads to this thing. So that's what I did. Because fuck the ad man. I don't know if you've noticed. You might have seen that I've changed my branding recently. Because... starting to hate YouTube. I can't turn on YouTube and not get six damn commercials playing in the middle of an ASMR video. 
or I'll be falling asleep. And guess what I'll hear? A freaking ad come on. Just as I'm starting to really relax. And loud, because of course you gotta turn up an ASMR video. But no. No, no. Not, not if you're... Not if you're a YouTube... Ad. And a YouTube ad manager. And policy creator. They're fucking up this channel. Or this, sorry, this platform. Like nothing I've ever seen. I call it the inshittification of YouTube. Because they really are a bunch of assholes. That's been it. That's going to be my first and maybe only ASMR keyboard video. I hope you like it. And I hope YouTube chokes on that and my ad policy. <laughs>